Mini Wargamer Dave here from MiniWarGaming.com. Welcome, Wargamers, to the Shrine of Chaos. This is episode number two. Please type in the chat to let me know if you can hear me. Because if you can hear me, then life is well. It's just loading right now for me. I can't actually see anything. So, yes. He's here. But where is he? I'm actually right here. Please leave a comment. Can you hear me? Is there affirmative yes? If there's an overwhelming... I can hear you. Okay, great. So we're going to get going with the show right now. Thank you very much for joining me tonight. We're going to have a lot of fun. You may be wondering why I'm in Matt's office. That's because half of the office has lost power. Because there's a massive hurricane that's been going around the eastern seaboard of North America. Well, like New Yorkish, And so that's why half of our office is down. I'm just kidding. The hurricane's passed and it's, everything's good now. But this is the itinerary for this week's show. First off, I'm going to be giving this little boy away at the end of the show. This is a Heldrake. He is ridiculously awesome. I love this guy. I'm going to be going over some of the tactics and cool things that this guy can do on the battlefield because he instills fear and death in the eye of your opponent. And it's just going to be really cool. I'm going to be asking somebody a skill testing question so that they can win that at the end of the show. I'm also going to be opening up a package from Ask the Wargamer and I'll be reading a letter and seeing what's in that package. I'm also going to be sharing something that I think is awesome. Now just keep in mind that all of this is chaos related. So if, if you don't like chaos, if you're allergic to chaos, I advise you to leave right now because you're, you're not gonna, it's gonna be like poison to you. But if you love chaos, and if chaos is your life, then just listen to Deppy as he says, we gonna be joining everybody for chaos. I don't know where that came from. I, I, just, I just wanted to do that. Uh, I think that's, yeah, yeah, you're a towel player. Get out of my podcast right now. Yeah, what's your name? Uh, no, you're going too fast. Rip, Link, Rat, tell you. I don't even know what your name is, but uh, I'm totally kidding. Welcome to the show. I appreciate that you're here, even though you play Tau. Man, I, I, I don't know what it is. When I see the word Tau, it makes my blood just... All right, I've got to calm down. Everybody's going to be calm. We are going to not go nuts here and kill things with hacksaws that are on Matt's desk. He is a maniac. What is going on here? I'm also going to be taking some live Q&A. You're going to be calling in. Not right now. Uh, that'll be a little bit later. And then I'll finally give this bad boy away. So without further ado, let's get on with the show. This, lady and gentlemen, is a Heldrake. Okay, here we go. I'm going to just slide you aside here, okay? You're the brand new one inside the package, so uh, you're going to be somebody's gift by the end of the show. But let's take a look at this painted Heldrake. First off, this is my over overall impression of it. I don't particularly like this model just by itself, which is why you're seeing some conversion work on it half mutated, half robotic. That's how I would have chosen to have a Heldrake. But because it doesn't come like that naturally, I have to force the mutation out of you. I will force the chaos out of your mouth. Yeah, that's, that's what uh, has happened here. So I prefer this, this look much better. What do you guys think of this look? Do you, do you like the look of the conversion over the natural look of the model? It actually wasn't Chris. It was my kid says Mel. And for those of you who have watched the Chaos review videos that I've made, I've only made a couple of them. Uh, Mel was working on his Heldrake as I was work uh, I was going over some of the Chaos stuff. So, yes, uh, this is good. I I am very happy with it. I like the paint job on this guy. I particularly like the the fire coming out of his nostrils on his uh, backside of his carapace and the uh, bale flamer 
coming out of his mouth. Uh huh. So that's the look of the model. I also think that it should have had a longer tail because it just doesn't look like it has a tail. <laughs> oh man, its neck is longer than its tail, but that doesn't matter because. It's forgivable because it's a Chaos friggin' Flyer, and it's just fun that we now have one. Isn't that right, Chaos followers of... I was going to say corn, but I guess there's more than one Chaos God here, isn't there? So, that's my critique on the model itself. Should have had a longer tail, should have been half organic looking, half robotic looking, but other than that, it's uh, a pretty cool looking model. I also think that the design on the wings here, that there was just a little bit too much stuff going on. A little bit too much. It kind of took the, uh, like all these lines in here, I didn't prefer that look when I saw it. When I first saw the flyer, I was thinking to myself, I, I don't like the look of it. It sucks that I don't like the look of it, but I don't. I'm trying to like the look of it. And so that's why I've chosen to have this uh, converted and uh, now now I like the look of it so I may even uh, put a tail on him what do you think do you guys think I should put a tail on this guy leave a comment uh, tail we're assembling it right now yes 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 sure what happened to the poor poor blood angels blasphemy not in this broadcast blood angels are good by the way uh, collect them they're really cool and I still play them but uh, as of right now, I'm kind of on a chaos kick, and rightfully so. I've been waiting for this for five years. That's why I'm on a chaos kick. But going with some tactics. Oh, first off, before I go to the tactics, I just have to mention this, because this doesn't make any sense whatsoever. This base that comes with the package does not fit this part. Yeah, this is unpainted. Sure, laziness. I, I didn't want it painted because you never see that side, so... It doesn't matter which way you put this in, it doesn't fit. Why would you do that to me, GW? Now, you can put it in sideways like that. That's not how it's supposed to go at all, and it kind of wiggles back and forth, but that's the only way that you can do it. So, that I, I don't quite get that. That doesn't make sense to me. And that is the stand that came in the package. So, it win the winner... Whoever you are tonight, when you get this and you assemble it and you take out your stand and you pop it in the torso of this guy and it doesn't fit, don't be surprised. If it does fit, then my guy is really unique. He's one of those special hell drakes that need some, uh, a little extra love to be forced into staying in place when he's on the battlefield. So, yeah. Okay. Tactics. What weapons does he have? What's his base weapon? Can anyone tell me? Anyone know? You have three seconds to tell me. What's his base weapon? Dremel time. Bale flamer. That is not correct. It's the Hades auto cannon. But the Bale flamer is his second option that he can replace the Hades auto cannon with for free. And so, stats on those. Hades auto cannon. Uh, strength 8, AP 4, I think that's right, yep, and it's a uh, heavy 4, and it's not bad, I mean, like, strength 8, like, when you're fighting other, other flyers or other vehicles, strength 8's not bad, really isn't that bad, okay, but what I particularly like is the Bale Flamer, that's why he's modeled with it, no proxying right now, he is really modeled with the Bale Flamer. Bale Flamer is Strength 6, AP 3, Torrent. And is it Soul Blaze? Can anyone tell me if it's Soul Blaze or not? Because if it is, that makes it that much better. Are you laughing at the way I say Bale Flamer? Is it something else? Is it Bale? I don't know. I say Bale. Because it reminds me of Christian Bale, and I like Batman. That's the only reason why I call it a Bale Flamer. But, yeah. This guy, um, where was I going? I distract myself so easily, it's ridiculousness to the max. I'm hearing noises in the office. 
Would someone like to join this live show? I hear the pitter patter of footsteps. Yeah! Whoa! The overseer of all joins the show. Something mini war gamers. Yes. If you need a rule clarified, you have to ask the overseer of all. That's the best way to do it. I so. know many things. My head is kind of cut off right now, but I should like do one of these. Yeah. Hey, I like your beard. Thank you. Yeah. Coming in a little bit now. You're part of the club. Beard club? Yeah. Way to go. You have to have a beard if you're a guy. Makes you manly. It does. Yeah. It's it's the accessory of men. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. 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 I agree. Yeah. I like Dan's beard. Dan has like the beardiest. Of yeah. Things. He's got a pretty big beard right now. Yeah. It's kind of like enviable. It's like bigger than his face. It kind of is. It and makes his like, face look big. Well, it's like like those cartoons where like your head does like one of these. Yeah. His face right now because of his beard. That's right. It's like he injected his face like full of head to make his beard bigger. Exactly. Yeah. That's, that's, what it that's like. exactly what he did. I think I so. Watched, I watched him do it. Really? Yeah. Man, I missed it. I it was it. it was kind of freaky to see. Yeah. Gotta say. Man. I wish I would have seen that. That would have been fun. You you know what? You probably didn't want to see it. Yeah. Come to think of it, my OCD is kind of bugging me a lot right now. I, I just the imagery is very visceral. Exactly. Yeah. So. Um, okay. So. Bale flamer. <laughs> yeah. We were talking about the bale flamer, and is that what you call it? Uh, yeah, sure. Yeah, you don't even... I don't even know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, okay. Getting back to this right now. Bale Flamer. It's a torrent weapon. Torrent weapons are awesome. Don't you love torrent weapons? I do. They're pretty nifty. You get to, like, to launch them. Yeah. So not only do you get, like, the joyousness of the Flamer template, you get the joyousness of the Flamer template at any angle you want, covering as much as you want. This is good. Yeah, yeah, it's ridiculous. You can extend it 12 inches from here. And it's like within 12 inches, right? So it's gonna be like here, here, all the way up to 12 inches. And uh, we all know that flamers ignore cover, especially it being a strength six AP3. Like you're just gonna be like raining down the hurt on anything. Like AP3, come on! It's like man, all those horrendous little space marines, poof, gone, no more existence. They just not there anymore. Yeah. I don't like space you, you know I play space rings, right? Yeah, but I, I don't. I play guard. And you play guard? Yeah. We oh. don't we don't get like the whole power armor and boulders and like sweet stuff and like allow them to live. That, that doesn't happen to us. <laughs> All right. So we're a little jealous. Okay. Jealousy is good. It's good when people are jealous of us. That means that we have awesome stuff. So okay. Now let's go back to this. Let's let's stop being distracted. Have a good night, overseer. See you later, Dave. Good I night, will see everybody. you. We love him. He's a good person. Yeah. Um, did you just copy and paste your um, really large army roster? That's fine. Okay. Yeah. Wall of text. Very funny. So much so that it caught my attention. This massively distracted, chaotic mind was geared towards why we all dead. Well, I'm. For those of you who are watching this afterwards and you're not watching it live, I'm responding to the chat right now. That's why I intermittently interject random comments. I am not crazy. That's just not how it works. Right, Bailey? <laughs> He's Bailey. That's that's what I call him. Nothing to do with Hell Drake. Should have been Helly, but no. Maybe Drakey? Either way, you got a friggin' Bale Flamer, man. Yeah, okay, so. Uh, this guy was a lot of fun to field. I fielded him not many times. Twice. I think it was about twice. Um, because I just got him, and so those couple times were a lot of fun, and he wasn't killed. He just kept on flying around. So let's not forget the... What's it called? Come on, we're going to have to... I don't want to have to reference the, rule, the c codex here in order to tell you. Is it Meteoric Descent? Ah, I can't remember the name of it, so I'm just going to look it up because I have to share this with you. He's a flyer, and he gets the Vector Strike. So, what's it called? Come on. Meteoric Descent. Is that what I said before? Or are you just repeating what I said? Chaos will fall. Get him out of the broadcast! Meteoric Descent. It's something like this. Something that goes like this. I'm going to sit back in this chair and I'm going to find it for you guys because I want to go over the awesomeness. That ensues. Meteoric Descent. Okay, by the way, this Meteoric Descent, his vector striking... Uh, is resolved at strength 7. Yeah. So things that typically vector strike 
are like your fly monstrous creatures, your demon princes, which uses their base strength, which is six. This guy has a better vector strike than demon princes. That's pretty nuts. I guess when you have this many metal wings slicing at your face, crap's gonna happen. That's just my humble opinion. Yeah. So, feel these guys, because they're a lot of fun. And I have a bunch more coming. I have two more of these coming from Blue Table Painting. Sean, he's painting a couple up for me, and then one is also coming from Worthy Painting. So those are going to be in momentarily, relatively soon. And when I get them, you better believe I'm going to make videos of them because they're just going to be beautifully painted. I, I can't wait to get them. So now, would I feel three of these in a game? I absolutely would. 170 points. Yeah, that's uh, that's pretty strong because they're demons, which means they have a five up and vulnerable save, which means it's hard to kill them. And that's like after things are shooting their snapshots at them because he's a flyer. So. Yeah, like they're tough to kill. And on top of that, he's got this special rule called it will not die, which means at the end of your turn you roll a five up and then he regains a hull point if he lost one. So he's pretty tough to crack. Like he's hard to kill. It's it's pretty scary. And he's got uh, 12 armor on the front and on the side, 10 on the back. So 12 armor on a flyer is pretty good. Yeah, do admit. You're, you're a beast. Now, you're 170 points. You're a little bit expensive for a flyer, but you do have a lot of things to make you expensive. And you're able to vector strike and bail flame or torrent things in the same turn. You're, you're just, you're all around a good model, and I like you very much. Uh, but you gotta, you gotta convert him. Okay? If you feel them naked without any green stuff, then he's just gonna look funny. He's gonna be made fun of. He'll be picked last on a chaotic schoolyard. Like, it's not gonna be good. So. And I wouldn't even bother painting the bottom. I didn't didn't uh, waste time on it. I say I didn't, but Mel, she painted it for me because uh, she loves painting. Like this, man, th she is an incredible painter. I, I was so shocked by it that she just, when she's at school in the morning, she, she's sitting there and she's like, you know, in class and she's kind of like in a trance and she's thinking, I just want to paint. I got to paint. When can class be over so I can paint? Okay, good. Bell ring. Painting. Yep, I'm walking towards me. We're gaming. I'm going to be painting in about five minutes. Okay, I'm sitting down painting. All right, finally painting. Uh, that's the thought process that goes on through her mind. I'm not making this stuff up. Like, it's it's crazy. Like, she she loves it. And she she's a workhorse. She just gets right through this stuff. And it's incredible. So, yeah. Thank you, Mel, for being awesome and painting up this Heldrake for me. Because... It's really cool. Don't be jealous. I've had you for a long time. He's fine, just so you know. Okay. So I'm going to ask a question to the viewers. What do you think the Heldrake coincides the best with? In other words, what's a good unit to complement the Heldrake? A Mauler Fiend, Obliterators, Demon Prince, Forge Fiends or Warpsmith, Anti Anti Air, Defilers, Ludas. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, no comment to that one. Zombies? Hey, that's actually a really good uh, option now. Zombies are fun. They are a lot of fun. Yay, flyers and pairs is good. Maybe that's the answer. Maybe the answer is just fielding a couple of these at least. You know, I plan on doing three because three is awesome. But yeah, one at least. You gotta have your flyer in there. You you just have to feel it because, and it's also because he's new. And yes, there's that like flavor of the month theory where because it's a new model that uh, people are gonna use them and whether he's good or not, people will use him, and it doesn't really matter, but I I think it's okay. It's okay to like the new thing of the month, and just as long as you genuinely like it. I don't like every single new thing that comes out, but I like chaos stuff, and it's totally fine to like chaos stuff. 
and this happens to be a decent model. Like it's scary. People are afraid of this guy. <laughs> it's it's pretty nuts. The the fear that it instills in people. It's it's pretty awesome. Oh yeah. Let let's not forget Demon Forge. So for a turn or a a phase in the game, whether it's a shooting phase or an assault phase, I believe. I think it's a shooting phase. In his case, it'd be a shooting phase. He gets to re-roll all fail to wound rolls or armor penetration rolls uh, because that's what Demon Forge wants. But that's just once per game, so that's another thing that he can do because he's got a lot of good abilities. Yeah, and he also has hover, so he's a flyer and he hovers. He's got the hover uh, ability. Whatever. Man, I'm just. You know what's funny? It's funny how chaos can make you happy. Like I'm actually happy looking at this guy right now. I I, I want to get the other models in, and I just want to feel them, and I want to I want to play games. I want to be up for a week straight playing games with this guy because um, he's itching to be in more battles. Now I do have a game scheduled with Andy. Andy is the orc player that has a deliciously good-looking army. It's painted yellow, and I played him once before. I did a Planet Strike game with him. He's played a few games recently against Dan and Owen, and I'll be playing him in a couple weeks. That'll be Chaos Space Marine Army versus Orcs. So look forward to that battle report. When my models come in from Blue Table Painting slash, or as well as uh, Worthy Painting, because I'm getting them from both places. I'm gonna have a game against Dan in the office because he wants to feel my he wants to fight my chaos because he just thinks they're fun and I think they're fun too. Don't we all agree that chaos are fun? Of course we agree. That's why we're on this show. <sighs> okay, so this is the next thing that we're gonna do. Now I'm looking around. I'm looking around and I don't see any. Um, package from Ask the Wargamer. It's because it's in my office. In the last week's show, this was in my office, and the package was just like right here beside me on the desk. Since I'm in Matt's office, I don't have the package. So I'm going to go into my office for 10 seconds and get a package and bring it right back. In the meantime, I'm going to ask you a question and answer my question. Answer me this, okay? Nope, it's not going to have anything to do with this. It's going to have to do with... Uh, What's the best thing to shoot that? So it's anti this. What's the best thing to take down a Hell Drake? Answer in the comments. I'll be back in 10 seconds. This is what I was missing before. I need this to be beside me at all times. It's like leaving the house without a power weapon. Not a good idea. Okay, so this is a package for, um, well it says Mini Wargamer Dave, but it was intended for Ask the Wargamer. I have quite a few packages for Ask the Wargamer, that's why I'm opening up these packages now. This is from Thomas McDonald. I thank you very much, Thomas, for giving me this package. And I am using the key of chaos to rip this open because I don't have any exacto blades by me. Never mind, there's one right in front of me in my face here. So that's what I'm going to use to open this guy up. Slice, slice. Let's take a slice out of life here. Always cut away from yourself. That's very important. We want to use our fingers for the rest of our lives. Okay. Um, and I've learned that I need to be careful when I open up these packages and not do it too rough. Because by doing it rough, I damaged a Dante, that girl painting sent me. I had no idea that she was sending me anything, for that matter. But she was sending me uh, two models, Captain Slaughter and a Dante, and I just like ripped the package right open and I wrecked it. 
So I'm sorry for that. This looks cool. Okay, so this is a, a letter. This is like a letter that you get out of a bottle in the ocean. Just look at that little long piece of paper. I love it. Okay, I'm going to read this letter. Dear Mini Wargamer Dave, my name is Thomas McDonald. Beware of Tom on the forums. And I just wanted to say how much of a fan I am to you all. I joined this community in 09 and have been loving it ever since. There have been some ups and downs, but I can't say I regret a thing. The reason I am sending this package is because your army is missing something. I hope you like him and his special base that Matt should hate, and hope he wins you all your battles. Sincerely, Thomas McDonald. P.S. I think it would be awesome if you made a video for this and maybe also a painting video. P.P.S. For Sanguinius and Co I mean Emperor. Ah. Um, yes. Thank you very much, Thomas McDonald. Thomas McDonald, I'm going to open this up now and see what you have sent me. I see a jump pack. What else we got? I see a, a regular pack. Okay, so that's the package. Uh! That's the package. Nothing happened to the model. This was just on Matt's desk, and I don't know why it doesn't have a strap. It's broken. So, look at the job of packaging this guy to retain his safety here. Okay. Okay, so who wants to see this? Who's interested in seeing what this is? Oh, it's magnetized. You guys want to see? All right. Close up. Coming right now. A little bit blurry. Wait for it. It'll go into focus very soon. Oh, come on. Focus! There we go. Finally, in focus. Who can tell me what that is? It's, uh, it doesn't look like it's, uh... No, it's not painted. If it is, it's only... Well, it actually looks like it may have once been painted at some time, but... No, not painted. A sanguine priest. That I'm reading the comment right now. Warpsmith? It's not a warpsmith. It's probably a sanguinary priest. That's my guess. A sanguinary priest with a jump pack. And he's landing on a broken Necron. So I don't know if we can see that at the bottom. Um, yeah. And power axe. My guess is that this is a sanguinary priest. I mean, look at his shoulder pad. Pretty sweet. Thank you very much, Tomix McDonald. And I'm going to take this off and put the regular pack on him. Having magnetized packs is uh, a pretty sweet deal. But I'm going to put the jump pack on him because it just looks more impressive. So um, I like things that look impressive. They, they make me happy. So models received in the mail also make people happy. Like That was just awesome. I, I feel really good about that. I feel good about my life right now. Because you know how they say like it's better to give than to receive? That's very true. Unless you're getting chaos things in the mail, then it's just better to receive chaos stuff because uh, corn smiles on all those who give chaos gifts of chaos to people that are chaotic. So, yeah. Um, I love that. I, I just, I love it. Thank you, Thomas. I don't know if you're watching this right now, but uh, yeah, that's a pretty sweet model. I'm excited to paint this guy up and actually use him. He, this is more of a cinematic thing, though, because the Sanguinary Priest doesn't have a base that's that big. So, uh, but that's okay, because it looks really cool. There's also a Tyranid. Oh, I didn't even realize that. There's a Gene Stealer down there, too. Okay, you guys have to check this out. I don't know, I'm not sure if you can see it or not, but, uh, no. Okay, there you go. See the Gene Stealer? See it? Necron, Gene Stealer? Yeah. Very nice. Alright, now to share something that I think is awesome. This is the segment where I tell you something that is awesome. And this is something that I discovered the other day when I fought a game against uh, an Orc player. Now, this isn't going to tell you the outcome of the overall game. 
It's just going to let you know how this particular uh, battle went within the game, this little fight. It involves a Mauler Fiend. Who would like to see a painted Mauler Fiend? I would actually like to see one too. This isn't a Mauler Fiend, it's a Forge Fiend. But I fielded him as a Mauler Fiend. Yes, last week I showed off the magnetized, uh, interchangeable one, but he's being painted up right now. And so that's why I used this guy in the game because he's nicely painted and it's blasphemous to field unpainted miniatures in battle reports. It was a battle report by the way so that's why I'm also not going to tell you the outcome of the game. I just want to share this uh, this one fight but I'm showing off the model first. By the way, Mel painted this guy. Yep. Uh, it took her two afternoons to paint this guy. She is she's a workhorse like it's crazy she and she loves this stuff like I said before I, I am a lucky brother like that's just that's just how brothers should uh, uh, be happy because uh, this is crazy yeah so this guy I'm gonna point the camera down so you can see what exactly happened so get a load of this for yours camera down right there okay I'm gonna move this back a little bit so picture this if you will. All right. Where is here it is. I'm looking for the guy that I was fighting against. I was fighting against some of these guys. Six to be exact. Oh by the way, these orc bikers, these war bikers. They were painted up by blue tail painting. So they're pretty sweet. They're actually, uh, this army's on sale, so uh, this isn't my army, so he's, he's uh, Sean's trying to sell this army, so if you're interested in this army in particular, then um, I'll, I'll include a link afterwards if you want to buy it. But anyway, this is how the setup was, okay? This is, what's this guy's name? Ah, oh, I forget his name. He has... This is his gun. I'm going to explain what his gun is, and you can tell me who he is, okay? Wazdaka! Okay, whoever said that is right. That's his name. Wazdaka. So this was the configuration. Alright, picture this, and then picture this. Picture this cultist squad right here, which was mine, armed with one flamer, no mark of chaos whatsoever. That equals 55 points. Oh, the joy of the cheapness of that unit. It is just awesome. Absolutely awesome. So... I moved up with my cultists. I moved up in such a way where I totally blocked his pass to get to me. I had my sergeant in the, in the back, my chaos champion, cultist champion in the back, and all the rest were up like that. Picture that in the game, okay? Cannon fodder, yes. These guys, you know what? These guys are terrible, but that's the point. They're fodder. It's okay that they're terrible because they're incredibly cheap. They're four points apiece, and it's it's really really fun. So this is what I did. I I moved these guys up, and his war bikers had absolutely no choice but to somehow contend with these guys. Meanwhile, my Mauler fiend, remember this is a Mauler fiend, not a Forge fiend right now, was in the back just waiting to get into close combat. So what he did is he shot at me, and with his assault three Daka plus his Wazdaka's Assault 4 Strength 8 AP4 gun, he took out 9 of them. So, 9 cultists are now dead. Just the champion left. At the end of the shooting phase, would you know it, I made my leadership. He did not run. So, um, he rolled to assault my little guy right here, because that's his choice, right? He can't, he can't assault my Mauler Fiend because uh, he didn't shoot at it. So he rolled and he failed his assault. Now that's a bit of luck on the dice rolling on my part, bad luck on his part, but um, that's just what happened. And so that was pretty cool. So this guy was out in the open. It was a victory point denial and that would have been first blood and it would have been killing a unit. A couple victory points right there. Completely denied. And it was awesome. 
So next round, my turn. What I did is I moved the cultist out of the way and my Mauler Fiend went forward. Now my Mauler Fiend has this thing called Siege Crawler, which means he can move 12 inches and he ignores difficult terrain. He's not affected by it. He doesn't have to roll for it. And then he went into close combat. Now, the thing about a Mauler Fiend is that he's equipped with, or he can be equipped with, which, which is what I did equip him with, is he had Lasher Tendrils. Now what Lasher Tendrils do is they reduce the number of attacks by the amount of uh, lasher, sets of Lasher Tendrils that you have. So if you have one set of Lasher Tendrils, you reduce anything, any, it's actually friend or foe, models in base contact with you, number of attacks. So I had two sets of Lasher Tendrils, so that means I took away two attacks each of these guys. And so he had uh, one attack on me each, because it goes down to one, and Wazdaka only had two attacks on me. Now Wazdaka with his Strength 8 Power Claw was uh, not doing too well with his uh, two hits that he could possibly get on me. And my Mauler Fiend, he's got Power Fists, which we all know double his strength. His strength is uh, 6, and so to a max of 10, I had strength 10, and I was able to attack with ease. So, Draco Spark 3, old one reduced attacks, dual power fists, bye bye bikes, Mauler Fiend Nom Nom Time, Lash Whips, great bedtime story. Isn't this a great bedtime story? Doesn't it just make you feel so good knowing that you're able to do stuff like this? Yeah, so needless to say, these war bikers at strength 3 weren't able to do anything against the front armor of this Mauler Fiend because he's a walker and he wasn't immobilized. And so they were doing nothing. Now, they couldn't even run away either because uh, the independent character here, Wazdaka, was part of the group. So he was actually able to hurt the Mauler Fiend, so they couldn't just choose to run away. Now, what I did do is I focused to, or I chose to focus my attacks on Wazdaka because. He was the warlord, and uh, he's worth more points, and he's more scary, and all of that. I'm not going to tell you if I won or not, but I am going to tell you that it was a lot of fun doing this. Because if I tell you if I won, then it'll tell you, it'll give you um, more of a gauge on the outcome of the entire battle. So, you can imagine what happened with the reduced attacks. And this guy is scary, by the way, because he can move 12, so that's just scary. And he's got Demon, and he, he can, you know, he's got his 5-up and vulnerable saves, and he's got Demon Forge, so... Oh, and he causes fear because he's a demon, so these guys here, because there was less than 10 of them, they made fear tests, which they failed, which means they were attacking at weapon skill 1, which means they were hitting this guy on fives. Like, it was just such a good bedtime story. This is so good. Okay, now I'm reading the comments right now. Let me see, what are you guys talking about? Things are scary when you're scared. Not being scared helps you deal with it easier. I agree, absolutely. So, this is what I find awesome. This is this, this week's segment of what I find awesome is Lasher Tendrils. That's right. Did the cultist survive? That I'll tell you, yes, he survived. This little cultist back here, the cultist champion, he was tactical in his kill point, victory point denial. Okay, that was his strategy. That's what he did. So, he was a very good use of the game. He provided the distraction with his unit, so that these guys couldn't just come in here and uh, get more attacks. Not that it matters anyway because um, these guys couldn't even touch the Mauler Fiend. But it does make a bit of a difference. Just a little bit of a difference. So that's what I find awesome. I love it. So now it's time to take a live question. Give me one second. 
like I said before, this is Matt's office, so there isn't a phone in here. Last week I had the show in my office, and so I had a phone right there. Give me one second. I'm going to get the phone. And we have keys coming. I'm doing a live broadcast as we speak in the office. I just told everyone that I'm going to go get a phone because it's a live call. And don't let that affect what you're doing, though, because life is good. So here's the phone. The phone is now in my hand. I am going to take a call. It's going to be a chaos question. Anything related to, to chaos. has to be chaos, though. If it is a chaos, then I'm not going to answer it because anything that's non-chaos just doesn't compute in this chaotic mind. That's the understanding that we're having when we go into this. So give me one second here. Just one second. And I'm going to post something for you. Uh, okay. Now, I do request something. When you see that I have answered the phone call, if you see that I have answered it and I'm talking to somebody, and you're trying to also call in, please drop the call because I have call waiting and I'm not going to be able to hear what this uh, son of chaos is going to ask me because a bunch of beeps are going to be coming in the ear, so um, that's just my request. So. There's a 1-800 number. Call the 1-800 number if you wish to ask me a chaotic question, and I'm going to take a call right now. So, son of chaos, come on down. All vote now. What are we voting for? Is it free to call? Yes. The one... Okay, here we go. It is free to call. It's a 1-800 number. It is toll free. Mini Wargamer Dave here. I'm putting you on speakerphone so you can uh, be heard by the viewers that are watching this. So I still hear a beep. I'm not going to get you to ask the question yet because we're going to be interrupted by beeps. So if you're trying to call, you need to hang up now. Not you. Uh, I'm talking to you, not the person I called in, but other people that are trying to call in. No more calling. I'm not hearing any beeps. Please, son of chaos, what's your chaotic question? I must know, is Deathy, how much more awesome is he in the new edition? That is a fantastic question. So, let's go over that. Deffy used to be 150 points. Now he's 195 points. He's a little more expensive. A little bit more expensive. Um, but it's worth it because he's now a demon. So he's got his 5 up and vulnerable save, which is awesome. Um, he's got 4 hull points, which is also awesome. He has the same amount of hull points as a land raider. So he's, he's tough to kill, right? Uh, does he have It Will Not Die? I think he does, to be absolutely honest. Which means on a 5 up, he gets a hull point back if he lost one, which is also ridiculously awesome. Here we go, by the way. It will not die, yeah. Demon Force, he also has that too, and he's got Fleet, so... Yeah, he is a lot more powerful. Awesome. He's very happy with his upgrades, even though he's 45 more points base than he was before. It's absolutely worth it. And all of his other weapons can snap shot when you shoot the Battle Cannon. That's a 6th edition thing, but it's like... Like, that would have happened anyway, but that, that makes him more awesome, so... Feel Deffy. Not just because I'm absolutely biased, but because he is actually really awesome to field. Okay. Yeah. And having a 72 inch battle cannon is just doesn't hurt. Uh, of course. Yeah. Oh, by the way, um, what's your name? Will. Will. And where are you calling from? I'm calling from Oshawa, Ontario. Awesome. And do you collect chaos? I have not collected chaos, but I have bought them many times. <laughs> Okay, are you going to collect chaos now? Yes, I probably will. Okay. You do realize that was like an on-the-spot question where okay. if, if you answered in the no, you might have people come to your house and visit you in your sleep. Well, I do play Dark Elder, but that counts kind of like Flanesh. 
Yeah, that counts. You're safe in that department. That is good, yeah. Thank you very much for your chaotic question, Will. All right. Thank you very much. Okay. Good question. That was a good, good question. I'll take one more. So here is the number again. This is toll free, so please call wherever you are from. I will take your question. Welcome, Son of Chaos. Hello. Uh, think about the new uh, warp talents. What do I think about the new warp talents? They are expensive. Will I field them in a game? Yes. Am I currently working on them to add them to my army? Yes. I have ten of them, and they're being painted. They're in, they're in uh, progress right now to be painted, so I am eager to test them, to play test them. What do I think about their stats? I think they're a little expensive. I do. They, they can't take any uh, like war gear option upgrades, and so that kind of sucks. But other than that, they're, they're terrifying because they have the Shred special rule and they have an AP3 uh, lightning claws. Like, it's, it's good. Like, they're, they're good and they're quick, so they're scary. Like, you put them on the battlefield, uh, yes, they're expensive for you, but they're going to make your opponent pee his pants and cry to mommy very badly. So, um, that, that's if you have, like, I would probably field them in a bigger game, like a two, like maybe a 1,999-point game. That's what I would do. Like a 500-point game, 750, I wouldn't field them. There's too many points. So, that's what I think about the Warp Town. What's your name? Pete. Did you say Pete? Keith. Keith. Yes. Like Keith Richards? <laughs> yeah, sure. Okay, so it's the exact same name. Not like Keith Richards. Keith Richards. Is your name Keith Richards? Keith Ward. Keith Ward? Okay, I see. Look at that. It started with an R or a W. That has absolutely nothing to do with anything. I just thought I'd like to point that out. So, where are you calling from, son of chaos? North Carolina. North Carolina. I love that. I love how we can all just participate in this awesomeness together. Thank you very much for your question and have a good night. Okay, so, isn't this so much fun? Don't you love this? What are you guys doing right now? Are you painting your miniatures? Are you, like, it, do you, some of you guys have kids and you're in, they're in bed and you're just uh, relaxing at the end of the workday? Are some of you guys students and you're taking a break from studies? Like, what are you guys doing? I just assembled a Heldrake, doing homework. Uh, watching football. My wife is sleeping on the couch. Eating cookies. Watching you. I guess that makes sense, right? If you're, if you're watching this, then you're watching me. But, yeah. That's really fun. Really, really fun. I like it. it it's, uh, I like being here. I think it's ridiculously awesome. And how about I open this up now? Okay. Not going to open this box up per se, but I'm going to open up the opportunity to win this. How about that? Do we do we say yes? Is, is that a, a, an affirmative? I got to see at least ten yeses in order for this to happen now, because um, okay, yeah, yeah, I like it. So there you go. Okay, the mob has spoken. So that's what's going to happen right now. Let me clear off this desk because th this is going to be pretty epic. So. Uh, Deffy, if you would, just for a second, you, you gotta move out of the way, just for a second, okay? Wazdaka, get your butt kicked in that one battle by the Mauler Fiend. You're gonna have to move out of the way too, because we have a new Hell Drake on board. He's coming on board, and he's going to be given to somebody. This is a gift of chaos, given to somebody, and I'm gonna ask a question, and. This time, instead of having the answer in the chat, I'm going to have the answer, the person call in and answer. Because then I know for sure that you are who you are, and there's no confusion, and uh, that's just the way we're going to do it. Now, don't call in yet. I haven't asked the question yet. So if you're uh, like putting the number in the phone and just like uh, going to hit redial when I ask the question, that's a very good strategy. You should probably do that, because I bet a lot of people are going to do that. And so the first 
person that I get that has the right answer will get this prize. If you have the wrong answer, I'm going to hang up on you immediately, and I'm going to get a beep for the call waiting. So that's what's going to happen here. No mercy. So you got to get the question right. Where's the Chaos Codex? I'm going to grab the question from the Chaos Codex. All right. It's going to be uh, pretty random and obscure, so you're going to have to think about it. It's not going to just be like, bam, I know the answer, I'm going to get it now. You're going to have to think about it for a second here, okay? Because I'll give you a hint. It's something new that has never existed before. So, um, you, for those of us who really want this thing, we probably would have had to have read it already. Or we're going to have to take, take like a wild guess in the dark. So... Okay, this is it. Okay. Oh, and by the way, I'm going to ask the question, and if anyone answers it in the chat, then I'm not going to accept the phone call with the person answering it, because then they can just look on the no they can look at the answer in the chat. So, if it is answered in the chat, then I'll ask another question. And so, let us all just respect that, that the person, it's, the answer is re reserved for the person calling in. Let's all agree to that. Can we, can we uh, have a chaotic pact here and agree that no one will answer in the chat? And I bet if someone does, then, like, you're, you're going to get, like, like, chat mauled by everyone else because it, it's not going to be good. So, yeah. No answer in the chat. That's the rule. Only calling in. This is the question. Name a unit that is able to take flak missiles. There's the 1 800 number. First caller. Say the answer. Havoc Marines. That is correct. You have the right answer. Okay, we're going to wait for all these other beeps to end, and you're going to be awarded your gift of chaos, <laughs> young sir. Uh, yes, I, I call you young sir. I actually, I don't even know how old you are. You, you could be like 50, and I'm calling you young sir, and that's very surreal. And 23. You're 23? Okay, I can call you young sir, because you're, you're younger than me. So, that's the I'm way it works. <laughs> You're the one who, okay, hey, hey, that's, it, I don't care. Hey, it, it's good. <laughs> it's, it's all good, man. Oh, yeah. It's a good day. It's a good day. So, this is what I'm going to do. Okay, now watch this. Uh, I'm going to write down your email. What's your email? So, um, what's your name on the forums? Okay, so spell it one more time. CH, CH, like Charlie, CH. Okay. Okay, so A N D E. Okay. Predator. So, okay. Then what next? At Hotmail, at Gmail, at Yahoo. Okay. Okay. So, I'm gonna email you, and I'm gonna get your contact info to mail this baby out. C congratulations. Your name is Will, right? Keith. I was testing you to see if you remembered your own name. That, that's why I asked you. So, Okay, Keith, what do you have to say to all of yours? Uh, I love chaos and I love many more games. There you go. That's the right answer. This is going to be shipped out like right now. And so when Justin wakes up, it's going to be on his desk. And this will be the first thing he's going to ship out in the morning. Because you said your answer that you said. 
Okay. Thank you. Good response. You're very welcome. Have a good night, son of chaos. Thank you. All right. Isn't it so good? You know what? Remember what I said at the beginning of the broadcast when uh, the feeling that I get when I get uh, gifts of chaos in the mail and it's awesome getting chaos gifts and it's better to give than to receive. You know, I feel pretty good right now uh, giving this away. So I think it's half and half. It feels good giving gifts and it feels good to receive gifts. So I think that's a pretty safe and good concept. I think we could all agree to that. So now for the next question. This is a question for all of you to answer, whoever wants to answer. What would you like next week to be about? What do you want me to focus on? The theme for the week, for every week, is like a particular model. The first one was the Mahler Fiend, Forge Fiend. This week was the Haldrake. What would you like me to do next week? And that's what I'm going to base my show around. Cultists. So it's got to be... Uh, okay, so we have cultists, zombies... Vikers, Cultists, Zombies, Nurgle, Warp Talon, Thousand Sons, Raptors, Talons, Mutilators, Havocs. I'm not going to answer this because uh, I didn't ask for a phone call, so this probably isn't for me. That's my guess. You know what? I think that Plague Zombies is something that I'm going to be doing. Um, yeah. I... You know what? I'm going to save the chat. I'm going to copy and paste the chat, and I'm going to see what the number one answer was. And that's what I'll base my next show off of. Because um, it really doesn't matter what the show is about. Just as long as it's about chaos, then people will just like their lives. So, yeah. Mail this out tomorrow. Keith, Keith Richards, thank you very much for participating and watching this episode of The Shrine of Chaos. Right now, The Shrine of Chaos is in Matt's office because the internet's not working in my office. No idea why. Maybe it was Hurricane Sandy, Katrina, I don't know. You know what's funny? The co-op student in the morning that comes here, her name is Cassandra. And Mike comes into the office, he's like, oh, so... Hurricane Katrina is like blah 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 and it's actually called Hurricane Sandy, right? And somebody in the office said Hurricane Cassandra, which is like the mixture of the two words. And I don't know why that was funny. Maybe it's because uh, she didn't realize we were talking about her. I don't know. Whatever it was, I'm glad that the hurricane's over and that uh, we are safe and that we're holding the blade of the sword and that we're getting blood down our fingers. That's never a good sign. Yeah. Okay. You know what I'm going to do? For the last couple minutes here, I'm going to just talk to you guys in the chat because I think that's fun. So, Frostmorn. Titans. Dave, I am not a son of chaos, but I just started getting my Blood Angels Battle Force pack and I really like them, but... What else should I get with? I really like your vid. Keep making them. What else should you get other than the regular Chaos Battle or the Blood Angels Battle Force? You need Assault Marines. That's my answer to the question. And after Assault Marines, you need Devastators with Missile Launchers. That's my answer to the next question, which is what do I get after Assault Marines? That's what I would do. Next question. Dave is a flying hive tyrant worthy of being a demon prince. Absolutely not. Demon prince is an exalted being of chaos. And that is the greatest thing that you can get on a chaos boom table, which is called Dark Apotheosis. Or is it something else Apotheosis? It's got the word Apotheosis in it. I just said that word three times. And normally that would make the word sound weird, but apotheosis is a weird enough word on its own that no matter how many times you say it, it'll never sound weirder than the fact that it sounds regularly and so on and so forth. Next comment. I made a vid you wanted me about the Night Scythe. What editing software should I use? I use Sony Vegas Movie Studio. If you have that, then use that. That costs about $100. 
So if you don't want to spend a hundred dollars, then just make just make it in win move movie Windows Movie Maker. It was hard for me to say that because using that software is blasphemous. But uh, use that because it'll work. So that's all that's required. Dave, what is crazier, the new rules for the Flying Demon Prince, or the your comment just got lost because so many people are talking. All right. Dave, what are your thoughts about Black Rage did in my first game with the new decks and flew around the entire table eating squads of long fangs? Of the Black Rage. Hold on, context here. If you're talking about Death Company, then yeah, that made them a lot better. Like, a heck of a lot better. They, they are actually awesome to field because the rage was their downfall before. Now the rage is their strength because you, you, you're even tempted to do dumb stuff like put jump packs on them and make them ridiculously expensive just so they can get around and get their extra attacks. Not to mention the hammer of wrath attacks on top of the extra attacks for having rage. That is just sickness. Yeah, and that's another thing that makes people cry to mommy. Dave, do you like Biomancy Sorcerer potential toughness 10 model? The answer is yes. I was going over the Chaos Codex last night at home, and because it's it's not an army builder yet, I had to actually do it the old-fashioned way on the calculator and all that. And right right now, my favorite generic HQ is the Chaos Sorcerer with Biomancy, with no mark of Chaos whatsoever, but a level two Psyker. So that would make him 85 points because he is uh, 60 points base and you have to pay 25 points for an extra mastery level so 85 points you have a and you're able to choose from biomancy so you have a biomancy level 2 psyker and that's pretty scary because you can give them really sick abilities I love enfeeble that weakens your opponent minus one strength and toughness and I think it also makes their make within 12 inches of them difficult terrain or whatever so that also helps. That's awesome. That actually, that made my Demon Prince really vulnerable. That brought him down to toughness 4. And so those strength 8 attacks that were attacking were scary. So that was Biomancy being used against me. So, um, yeah, Biomancy's good. Really good. But Iron Arm uh, and uh, Warp. It's called Warp something. Warp Speed, maybe. That's the other one. Um, those are good abilities. I think that's... Uh, I think it's D3 attacks and D3 initiative, maybe? I think that's what it is. But uh, the other one is Iron Arm, and that's uh, you add to your strength and toughness. And that and it makes you Eternal Warrior. So um, with your small, humble little sorcerer, if he's up D3 toughness and strength, and he's Eternal Warrior, that makes him pretty sick. That makes him a close combat beast, and you're, you're going to want to field him with that. So, yeah. It is 10:03 Eastern Daylight Time right now. My goal is to get is to do shows that are one hour long, and that's what I will stick to. So I'm going to say good night. I'm going to say have a chaotic good night. I told a bedtime story. I shared some jokes. I bore my soul. That's what I did for you guys. And the thanks that I get is blood on my hands from the blade of this sword that I'm using to protect myself against the screaming children in the background in this haunted building at nighttime. That's why I, I carry this with me at all times. It's also because it's like massive and it just feels really good to hold it. Like, look at this thing. Look out. Picture this in real life. How big would this be if you were carrying it? Like it, it would be just fun to go around, walk around in public with one of these things. I like to see people's reactions to it. Anyway, have a good night. Make sure to 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 uh, tune in next week. There you go. That was a phrase I was looking for. Same time, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. I will be talking about another unit of chaos. I'll open up another package. I'll tell you something else that I think is awesome. There's going to be more prizes, more questions and answers, more chaotic goodness, gifts of chaos, sons of chaos, 
and have a good chaotic evening.